It's program time, boys! So, this is my free base building program. It is aimed more towards beginners, but can definitely be used by pretty much anyone to either build a base or potentially rebuild a base uh, if, you come off, if you haven't lifted in a while, stuff like that. Um, so, go to the Patreon. It's free. Don't have to like, give me money or anything. Look at it. Uh, pull it up as I speak, so I'll wait to do that. Pull it up. Okay, so we're gonna go just briefly over the program, we'll go back to it. So if you're looking at it right now, you'll see that it is a 14 day split, which means it repeats every 14th day. Um, and you're working out three days a week and have two rest days each week. Um, you're basically doing five exercises every single day and pretty much across the board and they vary day to day. Um, there's a lot of reasoning behind this, a lot of it has to do with the way it's set up is recovery, um, progression, stuff like that, managing fatigue. But basically for the main movements, there are heavy, light, and medium days uh, once in a while too. And they're spread out across four, or sorry, five different movements. Six movements, I can't talk, six movements. So it's a squat pattern, a hinge pattern, a horizontal push, a vertical push, a horizontal pull, and a vertical pull. Those are all the main movements. And from there, there are the accessory movements. So you have a horizontal and vertical press with one degree of um, separation from, sorry, I can't talk, one degree of separation from the main movement. And then same with a horizontal pull and a vertical pull. Also one degree of separation from your main movement, which I'll go over briefly in a minute. And then you have upper body isolation and lower body isolation, a single leg movement, and a hinge accessory. So, for example, look at day one of the week, you're gonna do a heavy squat, a light hinge, a medium vertical pull, and then a single, single leg movement and a hinge accessory. Day two, you're gonna do a light horizontal press, a heavy vertical press, uh, a horizontal pull with one degree of separation from your main horizontal pull, a uh, vertical pull with one degree of separation from your main vertical pull, upper body isolation, and that's it. And you can read the rest and look how they all go, but um, basic setup like that. Sometimes you repeat the same movement two days in a row. It's fine, don't worry, <laughs> it's there for a reason. Um, so from there, we're, we're gonna talk about the main movements first. So we have a squat pattern. And what we wanna do is um, working through a hierarchy of movements, which look in the Patreon, there's a list of them, the basics for, at least in the context of this program, the hierarchy of movements. So before you start back squatting, you should be proficient at first a goblet squat, which with a kettlebell holding here on your chest, right? Goblet squats, you're proficient at those, then front squats, then back squats, preferably high bar, okay? Uh, with the hinge, um, we're starting with conventional deadlift, for example, uh, you work your way along, then it's an RDL, then a good morning potentially. Not that you have to even go through all of these, but, um, that's the already for doing things in. For the horizontal push, we're sort of just a push up. You should be proficient at push ups before you start, then bench pressing, and then potentially doing a decline or incline bench. And then for vertical pressing, uh, pressing with dumbbells first, overhead, two at a time. Um, then the standard barbell overhead press, strict, and then a push press potentially. Then with horizontal row and inverted row, fucking googly if you don't know what they are a barbell row, and then a pen row, potentially. And then for vertical rowing, uh, lat pull down, then a chin up, then a pull up. Pretty simple. Uh, that hierarchy is just for the context of this program. Typically, that's, it's pretty similar to the hierarchy I have my clients do as their beginners. Um, and then for the main movements. So it's a double progression for all the main movements. You're gonna have to do some writing. Don't be a fucking lazy idiot. And write your shit down and pay attention to what you're doing every day. Don't just blindly follow a program and to set this up a little bit yourself. You do a little bit of work, which is good because you learn how to program them. So for the heavy days, you're gonna start with three sets of three at about 75% of your one rep max. Uh, I'll talk about finding your one rep max a little bit later, but that's for the heavy days. And the way you progress, you start with three sets of three, and then the next time you do it, you do three sets of four, and then three sets of five. Then you up the weight, depending on the exercise, either five or 10 pounds. For the bigger movements, you can probably increase 10 pounds. For example, squat and deadlift. For the pushes and the pulls, probably five pounds. 
Um, and you start over with three sets of three. Then you do three sets of four, three sets of five, bump the weight, three sets of three, three sets of four, three sets of five, etc. Pretty easy double progression. Um, you do the same with the medium days. You're also doing a double progression. So starting with four sets of six, then four sets of seven, four sets of eight, repeating four sets of six, four sets of seven, four sets of eight, increase weight, blah, blah, blah. Same thing. And then for the light days, you are not doing a double progression. Those, um, I recommend you do three weeks of the same weight on the light days, or not three weeks, sorry, three uh, light days at the same weight, and then bumping the weight incrementally when you're able to. So maybe every third week, putting five pounds on, for example. Nothing too crazy. Um, light days are supposed to be light for a reason. They shouldn't be super taxing or anything. And those are starting at 55% of your one rep max. Uh, and the medium, I think I forgot to say, is starting at 65% of your one rep max. So again, heavy and medium, doing a double progression, which repeats every third week, or every third uh, heavy or medium session. And then the light, you're just increasing the weight every third session, okay? Not too complicated. Uh, you will have to write things down, you have to do a little bit of work, but it's good, okay? <laughs> Keep track of your shit. Um, and then the degrees of separation. So for your first accessory movement, you're doing a movement that has one degree of separation from your main movement. So we'll take um, a bench press, for example. So getting a degree of uh, separation from a, your main movement could be as simple as just moving your grip. So going from your normal bench width to a narrow grip. You, by changing your grip, you have one degree of separation from your main movement. You're still getting a ton of carryover. Pretty simple. Uh, for example, uh, bent over rows, one degree of separation could be going from a pronated grip to a supinated grip. It's one degree of separation. Um, or you can go from a normal grip to a snatch grip, etc. stuff like that. For those, typically, we're gonna say doing three sets, three to five sets of between eight and 12 reps. Pretty simple. Um, on days you're feeling really good, do a little more. Days you're not, you're not feeling great, back off a little bit. You know, either do fewer sets, or fewer reps. Go by feel a little bit, learn how to feel your body out. But typically, three to five sets of eight to 12 reps. Okay? Nothing too complicated. And then, uh, same with everything for a squat, for example, uh, one of your separation could be going from a high bar to a front squat, for example, or going from a normal front squat to a pause front squat, or going deeper than normal, be going ass to grass instead of just a parallel, for example. A lot of things you can do, adjusting tempo, um, adjusting where the bar is, the type of bar, you can use a safety squat bar, for example, things like that. Head a little, you know, use your imagination a little bit, don't go jumping the shark, but you know, just one degree of separation for your main accessory. And then, um, sorry, after that, you'll be going into your upper or lower isolation. And that can be a lot of things. Typically, one or two exercises there. Starting out, just do one exercise. Um, so, for example, if you are pre predominantly doing upper body that day, maybe you want to do some tricep extensions, or some skull crushers, or some bicep curls, uh, stuff like that. Just seeing, a little bit of upper body isolation work, doesn't be crazy. Again, three to five sets, uh, probably 10 to 15 reps there. And then same for lower isolation, do hamstring curls, you know, calf raises, leg extension, stuff like that. Try to pick things that you need. If you know your arms are lagging, focus on your arms a little bit. Uh, if you notice your, for example, you have like patellar issues, you do a bunch of hamstring curls, stuff like that. Um, and then single leg movement. So with here, this could be lunges, Bulgarian split squats, single leg deadlifts, step ups, fucking every time I try to talk, it makes noise. Um, step ups, things like that. With these, typically again, three to five sets, uh, each leg, um, eight to 15 reps, somewhere in there. With, and then hinge accessory, for example, could be uh, an RDL, a kettlebell swing, uh, back extensions, something that's a, a type of hinge that isn't like a deadlift, basically. Um, and then, same thing, reps and, reps and uh, sets for that. This thing's fucking high. There we go. Um, so, the way you want to set this up, if you look at the program, right, the order things are in, that's the order you should do them in. Don't just even if the first thing is light, the next one's heavy, still do the thing first. So you're always be doing your squat pattern first, your hinge pattern second, horizontal press, then vertical press, horizontal pull, then vertical pull. 
always in that order. Um, same with the accessories. That's the order of me doing everything. And so don't skip around, just go through in that order, okay? Um, progression on accessories. What you want to be doing is just adding weight when you can. These shouldn't be going, you shouldn't be going to failure on these. You shouldn't be going like insanely hard. They're not the main focus of your program. You want to get your main lifts up, not just your accessories. So you can go pretty hard on them, get a little bit of pump and stuff, but don't be going balls to the wall on them because you need to recover. And there are certain days where you're doing, for example, single leg work two days in a row. So you need to leave room for yourself. Um, what I like to do typically, especially with more beginners, is rotating these accessories every three to six weeks. Probably if you're beginning every six weeks, rotating the accessories. Um, for example, if you're doing Bulgarian split squats for your single leg movement, switching that to a, um, a step up, for example, or a regular lunge, something like that. Uh, as you progress, or if you're a little more advanced, if you've been lifting for a little while, you could add in uh, on your upper isolation, lower isolation, single leg, and hinge accessories, you could do a little bit more a few more movements, for example, for single leg, you do pull against squats and lunges in the same day, or split squats and single leg deadlifts in the same day. Be a little creative, be smart if you're new, figure stuff out first, don't just go balls to the wall every day. It's not how proper programming is, not every day should be killing you. And then, uh, what to do when you start stalling or stuff starts getting difficult to progress in the main movements. What you're gonna do? It's pretty simple. Instead of, oops, sorry, one second. Instead of just uh, progressing your normal three by three, three by four, three by five, you can slow down the double progression. So technically, like a triple progression, then is you can go from three sets of three, so three, three, three across, four, three, three, four, four, three, four, 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 five, four, four, five, five, four, five, 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 five then up the weight, and then increase again. So you can run this program for quite a long time, really. Uh, it's not a super fast progression. You're not going to put immediately have your squat go up 100 pounds in two weeks. That's stupid and not going to do anything for you anyway. Because um, it's about building a base. This isn't just a power lifting program. It's not to peak your strength or anything. This is just set you up for future successes in lifting. So potentially you could run this for months and months and months and months if you do it intelligently and do as I say basically. Uh, Honestly, that's, that's pretty, it's not super complicated. I know my formatting looks like Jamie Lewis's, but there's only so many ways you can fucking make a spreadsheet, okay? I get it. Uh, if you have questions, please feel free to ask in the comments. I will answer as best I can. This isn't so hard, you will have to do some work. Uh, and by work, I mean writing shit down. <laughs> not too hard. Again, if you want more thoughts on my hierarchy of movements, I have a video about that. If you have my thoughts on doing accessory work, I have a video about that. Um, again, if this isn't, wasn't explained well enough for you guys, I can make a second video, but I think this should be enough. Program is pretty simple. Uh, on your rest and recovery days, I guess I should mention, you should be resting and recovering. It doesn't mean you shouldn't be doing anything. It doesn't mean you should lay on the couch playing video games. Go on some walks, do some push-ups, do some pull-ups, do whatever. Um, some mobility stuff, do yoga, I don't care. Do something that day, don't just be a lazy slob. This is meant for people who want to get serious about lifting. This isn't for casual uh, people who just want to go to the gym twice or three times a week and not see progress ever. It's people who want to set themselves up for future successes. Okay? Um, I think that's about it, honestly. Uh, did I forget anything? I don't think so. Da -da -da, da -da -da. Yeah, but again, if you have any questions, please ask in the comments. I will gladly explain things. Check out the Patreons where everything is. If you aren't looking at it, it won't make any sense. This will be free forever. Um, any program for the masses should always be free, in my opinion. Anything that making you pay and it's not personalized is bullshit. So, always free if it's for the masses. Give it a shot. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you start running it, share your progress with me, please. This is a program I've run with many of my clients for many years, or something similar at least. Uh, and if you follow it, you'll see progress. So yeah, let me know guys, uh, I love you all. Thank you for following along. Thank you for at least looking at this. And that's about it. Thanks guys.